Chevrolet? This one, yeah. This one, well, this was, she did this, it was inspired from our Chevrolet case that happened uh, we came into the 2012 Sonic campaign that a uh, iron mechanic has set uh, launched last year. Who are they? So two agencies, one out of Toronto. They manage the portfolio for Chevrolet Canada, all advertising, okay. all branding, all, all assets, yeah, yeah. TV commercials, etc. And then they subcontracted cassettes. And both agencies together uh, decided to scout out a location uh, to use graffiti to brand this car, which is the demographic that they're trying to reach. Oh, yeah. with it. And uh, they decided to shoot all the commercials and all the catalogs and all the branding assets, images, visuals against the walls of the 2010 under pressure site without contacting the artists, the festival organizers, the building owners, anybody. Mm -hmm. and, uh, basically, it was an appropriation of IP and copyright and okay. infringement in Canada and federal law. Okay. So they're being pursued by us outside of court. We created a whole campaign where instead of bringing them to court, we decided that we would just keep bastardizing them yeah. and take power. This is, uh, I came up with this, uh, this slogan when the ape was there behind the fence, I figured it was like an ape in a zoo, and we decided to put a strip on the wall. Please don't feed the artists. Okay. Of, Please don't feed the animals. And um, it turned into this whole thing, and then it was incorporation, and I changed it to incorporation. Oh, the, shit. The, the corporations are raping us, and then yeah. it turned into from incorporation into a corporate ape shit. Okay. And the street artist going ape shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the apes and everything, and the artist, uh, La Montagna, from Quebec. Okay. was inspired by that and by our appropriation of her artwork and she decided to build a car and uh, All right. she she's going to do some other, other things, but this is an homage to our fight against Chevrolet. Now how would you feel if somebody said to you that graffiti usually is, uh, you know, a theft of IP, so that this is kind of like turnabout and fair play, how would you feel about that? <laughs> That's exactly what it is. But yeah. the thing about the law is, and the, the whole point of law is creating precedents and until somebody challenges something, it is what it is. So you can appropriate something, anyone can do it, you can do whatever you want. Like sampling music? And it's up to people to challenge those things, those notions and all that, to see how far they can go with it. It's like graffiti, graffiti in its first form is about pushing public space, legality, ownership, all these notions of all these different theories, and then responding to it. So when you get caught doing that, you can get arrested. And there's consequences to your action. Because yeah. You can put out your work publicly, somebody can appropriate it, there's legal repercussions for that, and you can challenge them, there's legal you know, repercussions for that, and they can challenge to you. It's like, okay. it goes around, it's like a, it's like a good tennis match, where it goes back and forth. Do you enjoy the challenge of that? Yeah. Well, I have a background in marketing and oh, yeah. brand management for about 17 years, so I know, and I work with a lot of these agencies, and I feel that they should considering they hire artists to do their campaigns in which when they pay something to do it, they own all ownership of like all rights to the work that, that they purchased. Okay. So they didn't have to go about doing it the way that they did. Okay. It was human error and a mistake. Yeah. But it was sloppy and it was the agencies not paying attention to the agencies that were subcontracted. So yeah. Were, th were there any retractions or yeah, apologies? Yeah. They destroyed everything without notifying the lawyers, which they weren't legally allowed to do. It represents millions of dollars in printing across the country and just that is being rebuilt, redesigned websites, all sort of like kind of website has to be redone, all their catalogs for the dealerships across the country have to be redone. Yeah. All, everything is possible for car show and all that has to be redone. And uh, they decided that they wanted to divide this case because they thought that they were going to stump us by doing it. So it was 20, represented 26 artists whose works were used. Mm -hmm. They decided to break it up. The first artist was a little bit too long. Oh, I know him. Actually, this work was there. They had actually modified his artwork as Lady Gaga was a plastic surgery. They removed the Lady Gaga from it in Photoshop, knowing that they could be pursued by the record label because she's a brand. And yeah. They can't force an association to make their brand in theirs. Okay. So they proved that they knew the law. Okay. So they did that and resulted in the Speaker Fund. They settled looking for $100,000 in damage. Oh, good for him. Yep. But that's because he pushed for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now we're pushing for the other 25 artists where they're on that to involved in the two, like Maria's involved in it, a couple of other artists, and then there's a whole series of graffiti writers. And, and what's interesting is Chevrolet and, and McLaren McCann and McLaren McCann, who are fighting with yeah. the ones who are responsible for it, still to this day don't know who the artists are. So oh, yeah. So if they're minors or adults, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you guys are keeping, keeping their identities under wraps, well, undercover? So we're going through one by one. 
Oh, fuck, well, that's awesome, man. Until, oh! Until we get to oh. that one, or those ones, it's not relevant, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they may find out the hard way that they stole from miners, yep. which is the appropriation of our one to miners. Yeah, yeah. So it's like having a Nike manufacturing shoes in China yeah. with, you know, 10-year-old kids. Butt shops. It's an issue, so what's that say about a corporation? Oh, I love it. So oh, I love it. There's a lot of political... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's... But it's it's, it's, it's not a fight out of ignorance, right? It's no. a fight out of ethics yeah. and values. Yeah. And, this is, and this is a big thing from the ethics. And that's the point where we, we've lost a lot of those. A lot of us were brought up with them. I know. My family, my family got a lot of them. The people, I, the people I bring into my inner circle are, are of the same ilk. But I find it funny that these companies aren't practicing things ethically yeah. or with, with certain values. But yet, another thing that's funny about, about this whole sort of like repeat issue is they're all the people, the CEOs, the shareholders that have shares in Chevrolet and all these things would be the first people that if somebody was to get a tag or put graffiti on their building would be the first to press charges. Yeah. Yet they think it's okay to appropriate it yeah. and to steal it from themselves. Yeah. Yes. They're not noticing the double standard? Well, I don't think so. I don't think anyone is. I, I, you know, I, I am kind of blending these apples and oranges together because it is kind of a gray area and I, I, I'm using certain things arguments, yep. but the reality is, on, on, on a large, in a large perspective, all these things are relevant. Yeah. It's, you know, I'm, of course. I'm nitpicking, but it's, nice. unless you truly accept your city, then how can you go spend a million dollars promoting it, or ten million dollars promoting it, when cities are turning around arguing that it costs them 600000 to clean it. Yep. So you're spending four times the amount to promote it. Kids have, have been in accidents, so they've been killed by trains and things recently. Now you're putting out this campaign irresponsibly where it's going to promote more people to go do it because they say, oh, if I keep doing graffiti, I might end up in an ad campaign, which is great on the Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but what risks are those kids going to take to do that? And will there be other accidents? Yes. And what are the legal ramifications yeah. of them taking those yeah. risks? So as adults, what are we doing in terms of encouraging irresponsible behavior from our youth? It's, there's a whole bunch of issues for me that don't sit well. Yeah. And I mean, when I work on campaigns like this as a graffiti writer and a street artist with these, with these agencies and with my background in marketing, I make sure that we explore and discuss all of these aspects first to figure out a way to make sure that the message is very clear. Yeah. And it's not a glorification or this and that. It's just, you know, if it's really about just a car in the city and it happens to be graffiti in the background, yeah. there's a way to contextualize that and get a yeah. message across that's responsible yeah. and that's not going to encourage or... So it's... You know, it's, it's, and, and they even use that as their first argument. When really? It, when it was in the press, it's like, well, this is great visibility for the artists. It's like, but you don't know who the artists are. What if, what if some of those artists are environmentalists and they don't want to be associated with a car company? I mean, don't they have a right to not be associated with something if it goes against their own ethics and values? But now you, you, you don't know who they are, so you never ask them. And I have an issue with that. It's like me with a festival. I do too. If somebody doesn't want to paint it under pressure because they don't agree with the values of the festival organizers, then I respect the fact that they don't paint. They're not yep. forced to do it. Yep. It's their choice. And I think choice is the big issue here. And this is, this is, and this is what a lot of the political turmoil is that's going on right now, is people aren't being given choices. Choices are being made for people. The notion of democracy is about playing a role in making that choice. And yeah. And they're removing those things. And it's, it's just, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. I think it's corporate bullying a little bit. And I think it's ignorance. And yeah. I would sooner see a company like this or an agency stand up and be a leader and say, we made an error. It happens. There's a lot of things mm -hmm, involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. made. Let's or, fix it. Let's fix this. Let's show that. Let's work together. Let's fix it. We're all part of the same community, Absolutely. ultimately. Exactly. And that's not what's happening right now. It's, I hear you. It's them against us. They're doing that greed thing. Yeah. They're thinking about themselves, yeah. forgetting about everybody else who's involved. Yeah, yeah. But they still want to sell a fifty thousand dollar car to an art student who's in the university, yet they don't want to pay that university art student who's painting that wall so yeah. they can afford to buy that car. Yeah. yeah. So they want their money but they expect them to go work with Tim Hortons. You know, That's a kind of rape, isn't it? It, 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 it there's, there's, there's definitely an injustice somewhere in that, and I think it's, it, I think it's more a dis it, 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 an ultimate sign of disrespect, and I don't think that it, it, it doesn't sit well. It yeah. doesn't sit well. I mean, there's, there's business, and then there's, there's community, and then there's business and community, and there's, there's ways to actually actively appropriate something while helping helping it evolve and move yeah. forward. Yeah. And as long as each party is involved, find a use of their value for it and they can sleep well with knowing that this is what yeah. I want to get out of it. And as much what this gallery is about, right? The artists have to come in here, they have to spend their own yep. money to do what they're doing. Oh, yeah. This is all them that does this. That's awesome. We offer the space, we manage the space, we run it, it's all volunteer, we're all yeah. paid, but it's a shared experience where 
we're here to do one thing for them and help them, and we benefit from it in one way because yep. it promotes under pressure and enables us to talk about what under pressure is about to a larger public and, yep. and, and meet with them every day. The artists get exposure. Yep. They're happy. They get to do things that they've never been able to do that somebody is not well, telling them, no, you can't do it. They're saying, go for it. Gorillas get sold. But then the gorillas get sold, cars get sold, and, and I think that that's what's important. So when everyone is on the same terms because it was transparent, it was discussed beforehand then nobody feels like they were taken advantage of. Yeah. When you don't have that dialogue, then people are being taken advantage of. That's right. Because I think, I think it's irresponsible one thing. It's false. False sales. And it's, it's also uh, disrespectful and uh, er eroding factor in our community, isn't it? Well, it is. And then what happens is it perpetuates that mentality that, you know, we go down and we look at who's sitting in the courts they have no morals, no ethics, and they're not respectful, but yet we're the ones who are supposed to lead by example and show yeah. them what morals and ethics are all about. But this is the example that we're setting. It's like, yeah. take advantage of whatever you can, use it, forget about it. If you're bigger or stronger, then it doesn't matter. So, yeah. you know, we have all these campaigns against bullying in schools, but yet people are bullying with, you know, rights, democracy, laws, yeah. laws, all these things. I don't know. I, I, I can't blame kids for being screwed up. Mm -hmm. We're the ones them up and not showing them how to correct things and also and then, them in a responsible way. And then you get the smart kids who are thinking it out, coming in here, getting involved, starting their lives. And, and adults too. Some adults turn around and they're like, you know, I need to be more involved. I need to. It's about inspiring people, motivating them, supporting them. It's about all of those things. I think, I don't know, I think it's definitely possible. I don't know where and how. I mean, it's just, you know, just keep doing it and then. Oh, you're spreading, look, you're already spreading the message. I think so. You know? So. You, you've touched people. Actions speak louder than words. I mean, actions enable you to speak to people. If yeah. you act on something, you're not blowing steam out of your ass. You're, you're actually yeah. doing it. People see what you're doing. People want to engage and talk about what it is that was done. And then you can talk about it. But you know what I mean? Get people and get them truly interested. Make sure instead of being preachy, yeah. or talking down to, talk with. Yeah. Engaged in of course. A conversation. That's how you connect people. We're all part. Of, we're all part of the same organism. Well, we're not dictators. You know, we learn from each other. Yeah. We listen to other people's questions and their perceptions. Sometimes of what we're doing, it makes us realize that we see it completely differently, and maybe yeah. we need to modify what we're yeah. doing because we adjust. Yeah. We have to. Yeah. We, we, adjust, we, have we adjust. We grow. Yeah. Things move forward. Things move. Things evolve. You have to. You have to be clients. It's like the art of war. Sterling Downey. <laughs> You're the curator at Fresh Paint? Uh, I'm not really the curator. I'm just more the, the catalyst behind it. There's a whole staff that curates. Okay. The artists curate themselves. They walk in and, and they, they decide if they're going to be a part of it or not. Kind That's of awesome. Tell me about Under Pressure. Under Pressure, great festival. Yeah? Great festival this year, 17th edition, just had it. Uh, lots of people came out. We're yeah. pushing forward to our 20 years. A lot of the money that we raise here is going to ensure our independence. Is 2013 going to be? 2013? The 20th, the 20th year? No. 2015. 2015? Oh, yeah. So we got a couple couple more years to build up momentum. Yeah, two decades, and then after that, then we'll see where, again, the community wants us to take it, because we'll have passed through three generations in 20 years of yeah, people, true. and we have to listen. We have to listen to them. We have to be there. And, and this space was great for that, because we get to hear what people want and how they perceive under pressure. So if it's different than the message that we're trying to promote, then it's up to us to... Yeah to rebuild it in a way that they get the message that they really want. I mean, yeah. language changes. Communica communication is key in the world. If you That's right. You don't understand remember, how something, you have to do it. Remember, how do you spell, ah? Uh, uh, that's true. How do we spell it? We're going to figure that out, though. We'll figure out how to spell it. Thank you, Sterling. Thank you. Thank you very much.